Teachers of Reddit. What is a teacher parent meeting that will haunt you for life? It was my first year teaching at an elementary school. Dad showed up with his son. This boy was a little shy in class and he was very bright and responsible. He had started the year below grade level and had worked hard to get on track. The dad was smelling strongly of alcohol, weaving and slurring his words. I called the office to have someone come down. We escorted them to the office and had him wait. He ended up getting sick in the trash can. I remember the look of embarrassment, anger and sadness on the son's face. I had other conferences scheduled so I couldn't stay long but the police had to be called by the administration. The next day the son came in and said he was sorry. I told him I was proud of him and that I was sorry his dad was sick and that I hoped he felt better soon. But that seemed to cheer him up a little. I sent home the progress report and great examples of his class work. I did try to reschedule but it never happened. The worst of it was around the holidays this student would ask if he could come home with me, or he'd mention that he wished I was his mom. I told him that his family would miss him too much and he said no they won't it broke my heart. He moved schools the following year. Was hoping for a Matilda kind of ending. Sadly number. Taught in an inner city school and had 160 students. Three parents showed up for parent teacher night. 3. So many parents would screen and never return my phone calls when their kid didn't turn in work or would skip class. It's hard to teach kids if the parents aren't on your side. I took too long wondering why this kid has 3 parents. My first year of teaching I had a mother who pretty much ignored everything I was saying and assumed it was all bad. I opened with hey, your daughter, has shown some excellent work in class this semester. She replies with I doubt that, she can't do anything. When I try and assure her she had in fact done well with proof, she dismissed it and said she will never be as good as her siblings. I then offered some advice for how to improve her already decent grade and the mother replies that's it I'll ground her for a month. From that point on everything I said she literally added another month on to her daughter's grounding time. I ended up just summing up as quick as possible to try and save the daughter spending the rest of her life grounded called the parents because 8th grade student was bullying another student. Bullied student is confined to a wheelchair and I observed the bully throwing gum at him during class. Father comes in, but only speaks Spanish. Cape Verdean math teacher says he knows enough Spanish to translate. So we begin meeting with math teacher, myself, father of bully, and bully. Father, something in Spanish. Math teacher what he is saying is that he admires your passion and... Bully interrupts. That's not what he's saying. He said you're a freaking liar. That's when I noticed how pee off dad looks. He angrily tells me something else before getting up, nearly flipping the table, and leaves. I ask the math teacher what he just said. He told me he didn't know. More unforgettable than haunting. I was teaching a very low ability group about Romeo and Juliet, and how I shall bite my thumb at them was an insulting thing to do. One of the children didn't understand what an insult was, and I, not thinking, said it's when you say something mean about someone. For example, if I said your mum smelled then that would be an insult. Unfortunately, the child really took this to heart, probably increased by being from an Asian respectful to women background and left the room in anger. I caught up with him and apologized, and let him know it was only an example and not me trying to be mean, and he seemed to accept that. However, the next day his dad came in, demanding a beating with me. He was furious that I had been insulting his wife in my lessons, and was out for blood. I made the same point that it was only an example and I wasn't implying his anything about his wife, and I crap you not. His response was I don't care. How do you know my wife doesn't smell at that point it took every ounce of control I had to keep a straight face, and the rest of the conversation is a vague memory. I eventually managed to pacify him, but I will never forget that meeting as long as I live. It seems this is a hot button topic in that household. I started to warn a parent that his son was hanging out with gang members and smoking pot. My assistant principal stopped me and pulled me into the hall forbidding me to talk about gangs or suggesting son was taking drugs. Next year student was beaten to death with two others by home invaders who heard that they had a drug stash. One of the dead was another student of mine. He was a nice kid. This exact thing happened to my mom, except the kid was killed by the owner of the store he was robbing as an initiation into a gang. 
The school forbade her from attending the funeral so she had to sneak to his family's home to give her condolences. I had to make a phone call home and tell her mother that her son called a girl a camel toe in class. Very uncomfortable conversation. Although I cut like a sailor out of school, for some reason I have a hard time telling parents that their middle school aged child said something like that in class. My first parent teacher night was terrifying. Mum and dad walk in looking like they couldn't give a crap about being there. I've got my happy face on and tried telling them about what's been going on in the classroom. Finally I finish my spiel and dad says, so, what's this about you calling my daughter tight pants I'm freaking out flipping through my mind about what he could possibly be talking about. Last thing I want to be considered is a pervert as a male teacher at an elementary school. Then it hit me. On the first day of school, the class was sitting on the floor crisscross and her jeans were literally so tight she couldn't cross her legs on the floor. She looked like a weeble wobble trying to sit down. The class laughed and she was cool with it. All I said was, okay tight pants, do your best. I guess she told he parents in passing and their radar went off which was appropriate. But after explaining the story and breaking a sweat, mom and dad gave off a suuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuu
He was concerned that his son was failing. I was explaining what assignments the kid was missing. And dad started getting very heated. Not angry. Upset. But agitated and loud. The louder he got. The more physical his his gestures. Since I hadn't been expecting him. I was loading some stuff into a closet in my room when he showed up. And pretty soon he had me boxed into the closet. Speaking. Sternly. Not exactly yelling. Shaking his finger in my face. I am not a small woman at 6 feet tall. But he was bigger than me. Angry. In my space. And preventing me from leaving. I was flustered enough that I couldn't really think clearly enough to take back control of the situation. I can't say that I specifically was fearing for my safety, but I was sort of in that deer in the headlights mode, where I could see oncoming disaster but couldn't move out of the way. This was during school hours, and another student walked in, saw what was happening, turned around and booked it. At first, I thought he thought the situation looked inappropriate and I was having some sort of assignation in my classroom during school, goodbye career, but he actually went and got other staff, thank god. They interrupted the incident, and dad stepped back. As soon as he took a step back, I think he realized what he'd been doing, and how his behavior was pretty scary. Like I said, I don't think he was mad at me specifically, just the situation, and all he wanted was the best for his special needs son. It was pretty clear that, once he took a literal step back from the situation, he was pretty appalled at himself. I didn't hear from him again, and the kid transferred out, unrelated to the incident, a couple of months later. I just provide childcare at a school after school hours, but I had to tell a mother that a junior, kindergartner, 4-5 years old, had gotten so mad that she'd said, I'm going to go out and get a gun and shoot everyone and then myself. This kid was mad because her older sister, kindergartner, one year older, had been taunting her in really subtle and creative ways, like complimenting everyone else but not her. The little one had also copied the gun thing from her big sister, who has said that before because she likes to say violent things and laugh. The mom's face just fell when she realized I was talking about the little one. They are both unbelievably intelligent and articulate, but the little one hadn't had problems saying violent stuff like that before. Middle school teacher here. I've got a few, but here's my most recent. White student and black student got into a fight. It had nothing to do with race, and everything to do with 8th grade boys being dumb. But when the white kid's dad comes to pick him up he says, well, maybe he wouldn't have got in trouble if you hadn't sat him next to a colored boy. This was a few weeks ago, not a few decades. I had a parent tell me her ex-husband kept accusing her of being a lesbian. I have no idea how it came up in the conversation. So about Jimmy's math sco, my ex-husband thinks I'm a lesbian. I'll never forget how one mother demanded that I give her daughter an A because giving her a B will ruin her chances of getting to a top tier college. She told me that I have no compassion and consideration for her future. Her daughter barely participated in class, and honestly she was not the brightest bulb in the room. I still cringe every time I remember her sense of entitlement. When my wife was student teaching she had a parent come in and demand the same thing. If their son didn't get an A, he'd never get into college. She was student teaching 4th grade. Apparently straight A's in grade school is all that colleges look for during admission. My parents were once called to a parent teacher meeting because my grade 1 self brought a deck of Chippendales playing cards to show and tell. In my defense. I thought they were magicians because they had on top hats and bow ties. My father was an elementary teacher for 38 years, and had one that topped them all. My father is white, and one year he had a student that was barely doing any work, incredibly disruptive in class, and happened to be black. This kid's older brothers were notorious at the school for similar behavior. When my dad had the student's father to come in to discuss his son, the father erupted. He immediately accused my dad of being racist, and refused to look at any paperwork my dad had on him. For a third grade teacher, my dad handed out a ton of worksheets, and was absolutely meticulous with tracking his students. So there was a substantial paper trail for a freaking third grade student. He began showing up after school to pick up his kids, something he had never done before, 
and yelling in the hallway that my dad was racist. Of course the accusation of racism went through the district quickly, and the father got the California NAACP involved. After several months of bulls, during which my dad kept teaching this kid, the district came to the conclusion that my dad was not racist, the kid just needed help. The NAACP agreed, and the president of the California chapter personally apologized to my dad for getting involved with the wild accusations of the father. They also discovered why the father refused to look at any paperwork about his son. He was illiterate, and wanted to hide it, so acted belligerent so he wouldn't have to admit it to others. My father retired a few years later, mostly due to health reason, but I knew this took a lot out of him. The whole time through, I don't think he was mad at anyone, maybe the NAACP for getting involved, and was mostly just sad that this kid and his brothers were clearly not going to get the help they needed. My literature teacher likes to tell a story about talking to a student's mum, who she was friends with, and was talking about how difficult it is dealing with students that don't want to learn. So the poor kid's mum says to him Jacob stop being a C. We had a meeting with a mom of a student who was diagnosed with severe ADHD, I'm talking couldn't sit in a chair for more than 3 seconds. We asked why he wasn't medicated since he struggled so severely, and it really hurt his own academics as well as the victims of his distractions. She broke down crying, telling us that she had been gang raped, and then gone so crazy she has been institutionalized. She then shared with us that while in the state institution they treated her like a guinea pig and tested her on every drug under the sun, resulting in her being in a zombie-like state. This student's dad is in jail for life, so they were under the care of CPS at the time. So, because of the zombie-like issue with how the institution medicated her, she says she will never medicate her son. He runs wild through the school, often hurting other children, and we can't do anything. The other most haunting conference, mom couldn't come to school because she had recently had a stroke. We have this little boy who you can't help but love to death, even though he does the opposite of everything you ask, but you can tell he's seen a lot in his 12 years. Anyway, things were getting pretty bad, as he had thrown a desk at another kid in my classroom. So, we had the aunt come to school for a parent conference. She shared with us that when our student was 6, he watched his uncle murder his daddy. She also shared that he says he can't wait to do his uncle like he, his uncle, did his daddy. One day, I teach in an urban school, and hold a lot of parent conferences, so these stores could easily continue. More stories please, this is one of the most interesting posts in the thread. When I was in junior high my grandfather had his favorite age take my little brother and I to a parent teacher conference because he was too drunk to drive. I didn't tell anyone for the longest time. Generally, I get along very well with my students parents, even the parents of students who require a lot of redirection and heart to heart conversations about their behavior, even the parents that other educators tell me don't care about their children. Over the years, I've found that the vast majority of parents care about their children, and as long as I do a good job of showing them that I also care about their child's success, we get along great. I try to approach our conversations as an ally, in the effort to help their kid to do well in life. I finally had a meeting where I felt like the parent did not have the child's best interest in mind, and it broke my heart. It wasn't cool the authorities abusive, but I quickly realized that anything I said would be used to manipulate my students at home. So I just ended the meeting as quickly as possible, making only very general comments. It was a downer. I told this story once before on Reddit, so forgive me for those who have read it before. I am a former teacher, I still work with youth, so I see an awful lot of parents, good and bad. When I was a teacher, a few years ago, the school was holding parent-teacher conferences. Mind you, this was middle school, so we held conferences with our advising groups and had a folder of work that we had compiled from other teachers. So I start going through this folder of work. This kid is a quiet kid who struggles with staying focused and daydreams a lot, but is otherwise not a bad kid or anything. We get to a science test where he missed like several points because of kind of dumb mistakes, and the dad took the time to go through each problem he missed and rework the problems with his son. So I am thinking wow, here's a parent who is really invested in his son's education. You go, dad. And then it happened. 
he flipped to the next paper, which was some daily assignment from language arts. The assignment was done and everything. He had gotten something like an 85% on it. But this paper had some remarkably intricate doodles on it. They were actually really beautiful. The dad sees this paper and without a moment's hesitation, he backhanded his son. It was hard enough that the kid got a bloody nose. Father proceeds to scream at him about how his stupid drawings were distracting him from learning. And how if he ever sees him drawing again unless he's making straight AS, there will be heck to pay. Just flipping out and berating him hardcore. I try calming him down by saying that maybe enrolling him in the art class would give him an outlet for his talent and it wouldn't distract him so much. And then the dad gets up in my face. Like, we are almost nose to nose. And he starts screaming that I am a stupid bee who doesn't know crap about raising children. You know, I just have a degree in child psychology and education. But what do I know about kids and their needs? I was freaking speechless. I was a first year teacher and I hadn't had anything like this happen before. So I grab the bleeding, crying kid's hand and take him to the office. Dad tries to yank me back in the room. In the scariest teacher voice I could muster, I said that if he laid a hand on me or the kid again, he would leave this building in handcuffs. I brought the kid to the office, had the secretary call the police, and made my first ever report to DCFS. Because, you know, he had slapped his kid in front of a mandated reporter. Former preschool teacher here. Parent teacher meetings always stressed me out, and more often than not they took up the entire week. After a particularly challenging one midweek I decided to blow off some steam and hit up a dance club I frequent on occasion. So I'm basically dressed like a skank, a wee bit drunk, and grinding all over the sexy menfolk. One guy in particular caught my eye and we ended up making out pretty heavily. We talk, I enjoy him, and I invite him back to my place. A really stand up guy, he explains that he would love to, but wanted me to know that he's in an open marriage, and... While his wife is cool with his having dates and girlfriends, he's not looking to replace her or get involved, etc. Suffice it to say that kinda killed it for me, but we still talked well into the evening and parted on good terms. You do see where this is going, right? Fast forward the next evening to parent teacher conference for one of the newer girls in my class. I'd met mom several times during drop off but when the guy whose tongue I'd had down my throat not 24 hours before walked in, I nearly shat myself. What followed was the most awkward parent teacher meeting I'd ever had, including ones where I've had to talk with parents about why their kids can't tweak each other's penises, a game they called penis tickle, which ultimately led to her discovery of an abusive relative, a child who wouldn't use the bathroom, but would poop in his hand and hide it behind the fish tank. This happened several times, and the fact that it isn't abnormal for their child to fall asleep whilst humping the living heck out of Bunny, the soft plushie she'd had since birth. Those were difficult, but coming face to face with a dad who knows I secretly like to be tied up and spanked haunted me for a long time. But I should stop reading after yours BC I can't imagine any others being better than this one. Not parent teacher but parent brownie leader, girl guide girl scouts, interaction. The leader was on the way into the hall for brownies that night, and was approached by the father of one of her new kids. He grabs her, holds a knife to her throat, and starts screaming at her for not making her kid a sixer, which is the kid who is in charge of a small group of brownies. Normally they only get that title after they've been at brownies for a few years and they're older. She had only just started. He says that if she doesn't make his daughter a sixer that night, He'll come back and kill her next week. Needless to say she walked into the hall, told all the kids to not come back next week, and that she was closing the unit down. The people are crazy. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.